and uh, basically break down for them why his last name is Butts. And I started going after a couple of the children in the class and their last names and how they got their last names the same way he got his last name. And so it kind of quieted the class down, and the teacher allowed me to keep going. <laughs> and because she, this was news to her, she had never heard of it. And then come to find out that she had a friend whose last name was Buds. And so, you know, it, it was a lot less funny. And the children were like, wow. And so the teacher decided to have them do a report about the last names, which I thought was very nice because it helped them to understand this initiative um, way back. So uh, you, if you have anybody out there with that last name, um, have them look up where their name comes from. If they have a hard time, um, they can get in touch with the uh, Economic Institute, um, BACA Dairy and we'll give them a little help on uh, starting that chart. But for my children, um, of course, they, we talked about this week, they have a huge problem that is presented to them before they're even born by black males and black females who make bad choices and decide that they are going to get together because um, the guy is cute or because the girl you know, got a big booty or whatever. And they're not getting together um, as a black man and a black woman to raise a black family. They're getting together as a black boy and a black girl that happen to be 20 years old or 25 years old and decide to mate with each other not knowing anything about each other. And so when a child is born from this dysfunctional mating, the child is saddled with a couple of strikes already. And so, you know, you got a child that, um, whose father kind of hit it and quit it. So they don't know a lot about their, ch their father. And one of the main things that many children today do not know is their father's last name. And you'd be amazed how many children, when you ask them, uh, what's your father's last name? They say, well, I don't know my father. I was like, but do you know his name? And they say, no, my mama never told me. And you're like, really? And these are 9, 10, 11-year-old children, and their mothers never told them their father's last name. And so they have the last names of their mothers. And the women, um, unfortunately, through anger or whatever, um, feel that they are uh, getting back at the guys by not letting the guys uh, know the children or they're, um, they don't care that the guys don't want to to be around the children. And if he don't want to be around them, then I just won't talk about him. And, you know, um, or you have children who were raised with stepfathers and they have their stepfather's last name, not realizing uh, what their father's last name was. And people don't really, um, you know, the family doesn't talk about the biological father. But then you have a lot of mothers who have taken on that uh, adult responsibility of making sure, no matter what, this is the information that you need to know. This is your father's name, his full name. This is your father's birthday. This is your father's uh, father's name. This is your father's mother's name. You know, just in case you ever want to know. And so we we really like to. Um, send a black shout out to those women that, you know, take on that responsibility of making sure that their children know where they come from, good, bad, or ugly, um, however the skeletons lie, um, they make sure that at least the children have that piece of information. Um, you have mothers that lose their children, um, their children are 
uh, snatched away from the community and put in the, the de facto child slave trade. And the mothers will work very hard to make sure the children know what's your name, tell me your whole name, what's your mama name, what's your daddy name, you know, where you live, and all this good stuff. And they, they teach this to the children before the children are snatched out of the home. That way the children have that in their memory banks. And, you know, it may be, you know, seven years from the time your child is snatched out of your home to the time you're able to get that child back um, for those that actually do get the children back. But, you know, while you have a large percentage of, uh, children that are snatched out of the home and placed into the defect slave trade system uh, that were in a degree of harm at the place where they were living, that harm is either equal to or uh, more when it comes to them being placed in the defect slave trade system. Uh, I talk to families all the time, and if you can at all possible uh, have family members that get these children when mothers lose their minds, when fathers lose their minds, or when stuff just happens, if you can, you know, these families are going to have to fight. They're going to have to sue in some cases to get these children before they are placed into this de facto child slave trade system because once the child is in there, you're talking about a lot of dysfunction, a lot of negativity, a lot of things that go on in that slave trade system that really, really messes up a child's mind. It fractures a, free, a female uh, child's mind. It fractures a male child's mind. I went into a group home to teach the, the young males there, and this home is run by these four white guys and two Negro guys. And all of the white guys and the two Negro guys are, are homosexual. And I'm talking to these young men, and they're 9, 10, 11, and um, from 9 to 13. I think the oldest is well, one of them has just turned 14. But um, all of the, the 20 or so boys, are homosexual, and they were actually making this um, the, this big deal because uh, recently, before I had come there, they had had a wedding ceremony with two of the 13-year-olds that have been best friends for, you know, since they were in um, kindergarten, and these two 13-year-olds had the adult um, homosexual guys had had a wedding ceremony for these two 13-year-olds, and the two 13-year-old boys had gotten married to each other. And, I mean, the, it was incredible dysfunction. I mean, this, is, this was criminal activity. And so, you know, you had a couple of the uh, children that uh, seemed to be extremely close, um, dysfunctionally close with two of the, the homosexual guys there. And it, it just, for, and it, this is an organization, uh, a group of guys that are getting paid to uh, run this facility. They're getting grants. They're getting all this funding and different stuff for this dysfunctional behavior. And, you know, you think about these young boys when they get out of this this program, get out of this system, at 18, they're going to be mentally completely messed up, and there will be they will be preying on other boys, and so you know it's you have a, a boy that his mother called me, and um, she caught him uh, with his two-year-old on the table now. Up until this point, the mother felt like, you know, homosexuality was, you know, wasn't that big a deal. It wasn't that, that bad a thing. If he has a boyfriend, you know, it's the same as him having a girlfriend. 
and she was devastated when she uh, was looking for her little two-year-old and uh, found him in a back room uh, standing on a table with his brother doing some things he shouldn't have done. 